If you're in your 50s or early 60s, you may have had enough of work and want to put your feet up or spend more time on the golf course. You probably know the state pension is currently payable from age 66, which means if you retire at age 60, you may have to rely entirely on your private pension in that period before you are eligible for your state pension, assuming you've got no other retirement income or assets. This then begs the question, if my only source of income is going to be my private pension for six years and I plan on taking much more income from this pot before reducing it when the state pension kicks in, do I have enough to retire and will I run out of money? To help answer this question and give you some food for thought, let's look at a fictional scenario of a couple, John and Karen Smith, who plan on retiring at age 60 and aside from their state pensions, the only retirement income and assets they have are their private pensions from which they plan on taking an income via Lexi Access Drawdown. I'm gonna use our cash flow planning software, which is a great, great piece of uh, kit to run some projections and scenarios. I appreciate you at home may not have this, but the point of the video is to highlight the effect of retiring early and drawing more income from your private pensions can have. It's probably possible to replicate this in a spreadsheet for those of you who are that way inclined. So, John and Karen, they're both age 60 and they're planning on retiring immediately. They've got private pensions worth 300,000 and 100,000 pounds respectively. John is entitled to the full state pension of 10,600 pounds uh, and that's in today's money as he's got his 35 qualifying years of national insurance contributions. Karen took a hiatus from work to raise her children uh, in the middle of her career and so she's got a reduced state pension of, let's just call it £7,000 a year. Their state pensions are both payable from age 67. Their expenses come to £34,000 a year which is what is needed for a couple looking to enjoy a moderate retirement in the UK according to the Retirement Living Standards Survey. We'll assume their expenditure reduces by 20% when they get to age 75 as their spending naturally decreases. We'll increase the expenses by 3% each year to keep up with inflation. Their drawdown pensions, um, so the remaining amount that's left invested, we'll assume that grows by 4% a year, which is net of all fees, and they're invested in a balanced portfolio. Finally, we'll set their life expectancy as age 90 and they're both in good health. I'm trying to be conservative for these figures and really err on the side of caution as according to the Office for National Statistics, the actual life expectancy for a 60 year old man and woman is age 84 and 87 respectively. So by using age 90, they should bake in a bit more um, safety. Okay, so let's explain this uh, graph on the screen now. So these colours here, this is the assets. So we've got John Sip worth 300,000 as we mentioned. We have Karen Sip worth 100,000, which grows, and they both grow at 4%. And finally, we've got this, this little green here is premium bonds. This just acts as a emergent fund, emergency fund, and we've set it so that you never access these funds. It's simply the rainy day fund. It's not gonna be used to fund their time. So as you can see, they retire at age 60 and the reason why their assets dwindle, as you might expect, is because they're drawing down on their pensions quite significantly before their state pensions kick in around this mark here. We've set it so their life expectancy is age 90, which is the end of the graph there. Now, this red, this highlights where there is now a shortfall between their assets. Um, and income and expenditure, which simply means they've run out of money. So this is age 77. This means they could face the unpleasant prospect of worrying about having to pay their bills or keeping the lights on in their final years. From age 60 to the state pension age of 67, their only think form of income is their private pensions. And so they were taking from, what, from this period, 34,000 pounds from the combined pensions worth 400K, which is a withdrawal rate of starting withdrawal rate of 8.5%. This is significantly more than what is considered a safe withdrawal rate of between 3 and 5%. Interestingly enough, in a study by the FCA in 2021, they found the average person in drawdown was taking 8% of their pensions a year, which is 
not too dissimilar coincidentally to the figures on our example. So it, this highlights to you that Drawdown really could be a ticking time bomb for retirees if, if these figures are correct and they could be blowing through their pensions very quickly and having to rely on their state pension, which depending on your lifestyle, it, it might not cut it. On that cheery note, let's look at, uh, try and reverse engineer a couple of things that they can do to alleviate this problem of running out of money. So the first one, simple one, let's start with delaying retirement. So this is this example here. And what we've done here, we've set it so that they retire three years later at age 63. The benefits to this are twofold. Firstly, ultimately less income is going to be taken from the pension over their retirement and their pensions will have more time to grow potentially. Although this could be a double-edged sword if investment returns or markets perform poorly on the eve of their retirement. In this example though, if they do delay their retirement by just three years, it wouldn't run out of money during their lifetime. As we can see, there's no red uh, up to age 90, the life expectancy that we've set. By age 74, they would still have pensions worth over 160K, which their loved ones could potentially inherit tax-free if they snuffed it. If the prospect of having to work longer than John and Karen uh, anticipated or planned for, and it filled them with dread, what an option that they could do uh, is considered downsizing later in retirement. If we assume the property was worth, let's call it £450,000 uh, mortgage free and they downsized to one, maybe a bungalow if they could get one, for 300 k at age 70, this could free up £150,000 that they could fund towards their retirement. We'll knock off £10,000, that's lost to miscellaneous costs such as um, removal fees, conveyances, estate agents, stamp duty, etc. Et in this scenario, as you can see here, they wouldn't run out of money. Or they would, but it would be at age 89, which is just before their age 90, so it's certainly helped them. And you can see this on the graph here, this injection, this £140,000 injection there, which is that green uh, spike. So far in these examples, we've assumed the growth rate has been nice and linear each year at a steady 4%. The reality is that financial markets are a lot lumpy, as you can see with the past returns of the US stock market on the screen now. What presents a further risk of drawdown is something called sequence of returns risk, which sounds very fancy. The idea of this is that the order and timing of your investment returns can have a huge impact on how long your retirement funds could last. To give you a simple example, if you retired and began to take a regular income from your pension and then the very next day, the stock market crashes 30%. This presents a further risk to your retirement as not only are you now taking an income from your pension and running it down, but you're taking it from the lower fund value. So effectively, more income, relatively speaking, compared to the uh, reduced value of the pot and you're crystallizing what were effectively paper losses up until the point you needed an income. Let's highlight how sequence of returns can impact your retirement. So let's retire, return to the example of John and Karen where they delayed their retirement by three years and this really did help their um, retirement planning. I think they only ran out of money at age 90, 89 it was, so just, just a year before the planned life expectancy of 90. What we're gonna do though in this example, we're gonna incorporate a stock market crash in recovery and we're gonna use an example for our 2008 to 2012, which covered the banking crisis and also ebbed into the sovereign debt crisis where, if you remember, people thought Greece was going to default and it would spill over to the rest of the um, Eurozone. So in this example, the UK stock market lost over a third of its value before eventually recovering. Using this assumption for John and Karen, we can see that their pensions would now run out at age 86 compared to age 89 uh, example earlier. Yes, there are things that you can do to try and mitigate the risk of sequence of returns um, and poor stock market returns or crashes on the eve of your retirement, such as holding a couple of years worth of income in cash, but you get the picture on a high level and there's something to be aware of if you are um, close to retirement. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you are approaching retirement and contemplating drawdown, watch this video which looks at three of the biggest risks of this retirement option that I see and how you can try and mitigate them. 
I've touched on this point and would like to highlight again that a cash flow forecast is likely to be wrong almost immediately in year one and it can't be relied on entirely. It's impossible to control the variables such as growth, investment returns, life expectancy, inflation, and changes to your own circumstances and should be used with much caution. If investment returns are much worse than expected, you live significantly longer than expected, or you enter long-term care, this can blow the cash flow out of the water. I've deliberately avoided budgeting or accounting for potential care fees, as this is a huge unknown. Even if you do enter care, the government seesawed on introducing a cap on care fees before abandoning this idea and the other nuances around it, such as how it's funded, do, is, will the state help you, uh, and the value of your assets and capital and things like that. 